a New York judge could soon unseal the names of nearly 200 people allegedly connected to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. The list could reveal the identity of several high-profile <coughs> people that were listed as John and Jane Doe in court documents up until this point. Epstein, of course, died in prison or jail in New York in 2019 while awaiting the federal trial for sex trafficking. His death was ruled a suicide. And joining us now to talk about the very latest in this case that has these developments, Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson. Hey, Matt, what's the latest? Hi, good morning to you both. Yeah, I keep on hitting refresh, waiting for it to be published. We're talking about a list, a very large list, 150 to 200 names connected to Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. It could be released as early as this morning. This after the deadline for the objections to releasing the list expired overnight. The identities of dozens of associates connected to the sex trafficking conspiracy could be exposed. The document stemming from a civil suit nine years ago when alleged sex trafficking victim Virginia Jufre filed a defamation claim against Maxwell. She produced a list of names in deposition and has also settled a civil suit against British Prince Prince Andrew outside of court. Here's what she had to say about that. What do you make of Prince Andrew's denials? Can you comment on that? You said you won't be silenced. He has been out, outspoken. He knows what he's done and he can attest to that. So. Can you repeat that? We can't hear you. Step up. He knows exactly what he's done and um, I hope he comes clean about it. Prince Andrew has denied any wrongdoing. The list of names expected to be released today include associates, co-conspirators, former employees, alleged perpetrators, and alleged victims. As we know, as you just said, Epstein died by suicide before going to trial. Maxwell was convicted and serving a 20-year sentence. She is appealing that verdict. Julia, Ted? All right, thank you, Matt. Um, it's going to be interesting to see uh, those names. Obviously, let's talk about it more with trial attorney, former police lieutenant Rick King. You know, the the names being released to the public is it's interesting, and people are going to have their opinions. Mm -hmm. But it's not as though law enforcement and prosecutors they've known this all along this is not new information for the investigation so people shouldn't think Let oh there's going to be charges no this is right. you know this is just hey guys look who was on jeffrey's weird, <laughs> weirdo plane <laughs> who are his friends yeah <laughs> Rick, do you think yeah. there's, I mean, is, is, it, this is, is this just maybe a civil action? I, I don't even see that because everyone knows, like every, everyone on that list knows they were on the list, likely, and law enforcement knows who's on that list. Right. Yeah, right now what you have is just a bunch of people who are super nervous about their names being put out in the paper. Um, other than that, I mean, I, I, you're right, Ted. Very little will come of it as a result of the release of these names at this point because, like you said, everybody who's on that list already knows they're on the list. Law enforcement is known. And if, the, if there was going to be civil actions, I'm sure they would have been filed by now. Um, this is just... Uh, like I said, a lot of people sit and wait, re hit and refresh, like Matt said, waiting to see if their name pops up. No, you know, it's about transparency. I think would be mm -hmm. the argument about why this needs to come forward. This was a case that was shrouded in a lot of secrecy up until the point when it was all revealed what was going on. So I think that's another peg of this. Now, Florida, we know, is where uh, some of these things happened. Florida is where Ghislaine Maxwell is serving out her prison sentence. I was in New York for her sentencing, and then she was then transferred to prison. But Rick, you're there in Florida. What's the sentiment of the impact that this case has had? Uh, just something that's been looked at on such a wide international scale. I mean, I'm here in Palm Beach County. And so because it's Palm Beach County, there is a there's a huge, you know, following of what's going on and people want to know here. I mean, this this case actually it touched our sheriff's office here in that, you know, there was a release of Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein from jail at some point. It touched kind of everyone and there were, there's really nobody who was involved in the case um, who right now. People want to know. They want to know who these people are, and they want to know what their involvement was. And it's more of a it, right now. It's a, it's the centerpiece of attention because people want to know. And like you said, it's about transparency. And I think that when you give people when, and the public, and you give people and the public the, the the information that they want to know, I think that's what journalism is is about. And I think that's what people are waiting for. 
In this case, uh, uh, more than any in recent memory, is one of those where everybody just shrugs off and says, oh yeah, rich, powerful people, they get to conceal stuff. They Because we didn't get to hear and see all of it, right? And even Epstein's death had a whole shroud of, um, like, you know, there was a conspiracy theorist that you know, mm -hmm. believed that he was murdered. Um, it's one of those cases that makes the general public sort of... Um, uh, angry, right, at, at, the, at the the plight of all of us low-lying people thinking, oh, the, the you know, the, the, the rich and powerful get treated differently. And this judge said, no, let's let them out. Let we, and, and to that, I think there will be a little bit of uh, some, some, some faith in the system, I guess. I mean, when you think about it, just the, the information around his death, you know, when you're in jail, you know, there's there's a responsibility of the uh, the correction, correctional officers to monitor the inmates. I mean, I know in Palm Beach County here, we have 15 minute checks. Those deputies are required to uh, to walk around and check those inmates every 15 minutes to make sure what's going on. So when you hear that someone was able to do this and, you know, take their own life in the jail, you start looking back internally about what happened. And I think those those facts, when people know those things and they wonder, well, how did this happen? Um, it, it leads to that whole conspiracy type understanding or theory of what may have happened inside the jail and how it is that Jeffrey Epstein came to fall that type of death. Yeah, that's so true. What you were saying, Ted, about uh, if this had been any other case, everything would have been out oh, yeah. in the open and we would have known. I mean, look at the what we're hearing about and what's coming up next, the Young Thug trial. You've got all of these people who were listed and we're going to know about it in a case that is in a courtroom that has cameras. This happened in New York where they don't have cameras. But Lieutenant King, I want to talk to you about the victims in this case. When I was there for Maxwell's sentencing, you saw them come out in full force and they were willing to tell their story, talking about just how important this was to see her, even though she didn't take responsibility for her role. She did say that she regretted their pain. Does a release like this, an unsealing of people's names who may have been associated with Epstein, may not have been criminally responsible, but were part of people who may have been protecting him, does that help the victims with their healing or does this just open up the wounds again, in your opinion? So first, I haven't been Lieutenant King in about almost almost 15 years now, but thank you for that. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, the, but what I think what you find in these cases is that it, it gives some validity to what the people are saying when when stories that they've told, there's people now names being released that validate what they said all along. And I think in some ways it gives them that that feeling of validity and closure. It allows them to move on with their lives. For other people, uh, Julia, I think it's going to be, it opens the wound again. You know, everybody handles these things a little bit differently. Like, you know, for, for me personally, you know, um, I prefer things that, that have caused me pain to, I, I prefer to close the door and not go back. Some people need that, that catharsis, that type of healing where they need to have their pain and their story validated. And I think for some people, this will help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know the people on the, the list are not going to be happy because yeah, let's say, gonna... of the 150 people, um, you know, there's no way that all 150 people did anything wrong, right? So some, there would be people on the list that went on Jeffrey Epstein's plane for business reasons, whatever, went to, maybe went to the island, had nothing to do with young underage girls, et cetera, et cetera. Well, are we now, learn their that name, from the list? Is it going to right. be clear? Is it, yeah, it or is it just a big list? And, 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 and for those people that did nothing wrong, it's going to be difficult as well. So we, I guess we'll progress and see where it takes us. But the good news <laughs> is that uh, uh, there is a little sunlight now uh, on this case that has been concealed for so 